Hey up there, right, I'm just recovering from a two day 400 mile tour of the Dales on the Mule. More on that next week, so keep an eye open, but this week I promised you a shop tour of Hitchcock's motorcycles. Now I have held back a little bit with this video, because I did a lot of filming the day that I was there, which means that the channel got a bit Hitchcocky at one point, and I wanted to balance the videos out with some other subjects. It's funny how your imagination works. I first became aware of Hitchcock's back in the early 1990s when I first became interested in the Royal Enfield Bullet. They would run full page adverts regularly in classic bike and classic motorcycle magazines. And I've no idea why, but I had this image in my head of a grubby little corner shop in some built up area somewhere. I don't say that as a bad thing, it's just the image that I had in my head. Now Hitchcock's haven't always been like this, but the reality today is that it's a far cry from what my imagination told me it was. A large expansive warehouse and research and development facility. Today Hitchcock's is mainly an internet retailer, but they do have a little physical shop where customers can visit and pick up whatever it is they're wanting. And as well as having products on display, they also have a gorgeous collection of old and new Royal Enfields, including this original 1934 350 bullet. These bikes are not for sale. The owners collected them to preserve them for posterity and also to have patterns available so that they can make new parts for old bikes as and when customers require them around the world. The nerve centre of the business is their call centre. I think I counted about six stations where internet and phone orders are processed and also customer queries and any warranty issues can be addressed. And it's from here that the orders are passed on to the picking and packing department where a dedicated workforce process the orders and this is where it gets interesting. I think Hitchcock's have got to be the biggest suppliers worldwide of both used parts collected from all around the world and of course pattern parts and original parts for all Royal Enfield models both vintage and present day and I have to say their warehouse facilities are a veritable maze with storeroom facilities spread around various parts of the buildings on different levels it sort of reminded me of that scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark at the end where the Ark of the Covenant has been wheeled off into a warehouse. I actually got lost several times, with galleries of stock shelves seemingly running off in all directions. And it seemed to me it didn't matter what age or model of Royal Enfield you have, past or present. If you need a part for it, it's hidden away on a shelf somewhere here. As well as supplying all the major brands for aftermarket parts, Hitchcock's also stock the full range of original and genuine Royal Enfield parts, everything from seats to oil filters. Dan at Hitchcock's told me that they have agents all over the world, especially in America, collecting serviceable used parts, which then ship to the UK and made available worldwide for restorers and vintage bike owners. Seriously, I don't think you'll see a stock of used and new Royal Enfield parts quite like this anywhere in the world. As a lot of you will already be aware, Hitchcock's have their own brand of aftermarket parts. And although they don't claim to make them in-house themselves, all research and development is done in-house. 
with access to Royal Enfield models ranging from the year 1910 right up to 2021. They have a fantastic workshop facility that allows them to measure and develop parts for each individual model to ensure that the final products give optimal customer satisfaction. Now, this is just the first workshop. They also have a second metalworking workshop. A delightful mixture of high-tech and old school. This place reminded me and smelt just like my old metalworking class. As far as I was able to make out from Dan, this is where they make up their prototypes. And I believe they also do some reconditioning of used parts here. They even have their own dedicated in-house dyno, an invaluable aid for measuring the performance gain of their parts. But I think what has to be my favourite part of the whole tour was a small room up in the loft space of the actual warehouse itself and I've got absolutely no idea how they got these bikes up there. An eclectic mix of motorcycles, all Royal Enfields, old ranging up to relatively new, including one of Johnny Britton's original competition bikes looking a little bit worse for wear now but a genuine and very important piece of Royal Enfield history, which will hopefully one day be restored and back on the road again. Again, these bikes are stored here to enable Hitchcocks to take patterns for replacement parts that are no longer available should the need arise. But if what you need isn't here, all is not necessarily lost, because they also have an extensive collection of original Royal Enfield factory blueprints. Thank you so much for joining me on this magical mystery tour of Hitchcock's motorcycles. I really appreciate it and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I would like to say a big thank you to the Hitchcock family and their staff for allowing me into the premises to do what I do. And I will of course leave a link to their website in the video description down below. Now if you have enjoyed this video please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out and allows the growth of this channel. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Hit the notification bell and ensure that all your notifications are enabled and you will be alerted whenever I upload a new video. Now, I am still taking a break, so there won't be another video until next Friday. Unless, of course, you would like to see a little virtual ride from my recent travels in the Yorkshire Dales on the mule. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that and I'll see what I can do. In the meantime, I hope you're riding as much as you possibly can in what's left of this summer. And if you are riding, please ride safely and I'll see you soon.